Michigan. This is Tap In Podcast with Pamela Kime from Grand Tap Media and Stephanie Kolakowski with Grow Business Today. We have a special guest off location. She found time to be on our podcast. Uh, we're going to talk about um, how she's pivoting in 2021 and what she did to get through 2020. So I want to welcome to the show Shelly Irwin from the morning show with Shelly Irwin on WGVU and all the other stuff that she does in, um, in her life. So welcome to the show, Shelly. <laughs> oh, it's, it's wonderful to be here. And uh, uh, yes, I found time. Better word, I made time. This is the highlight of my day. Oh my God. Well, thank you so much. You, you were, we're so glad to have you. Okay, the, the, the focus of this um, tap in is to, to tap into people like you and how you're pivoting during this COVID. I know we, we want this to be over, but it's here and how you've been because a lot of our lives have been flipped upside down. Things that we normally did on a regular basis have been changing. We can't go in the public, we can't be MCs, we can't go events. So let me, let's me let share a little bit of what you've been doing um, since March to keep this going yes. and what you're doing to build, connect with your viewer, your listeners. Yes, thank you for this. Well, first of all, uh, uh, it has been uh, a very year and we do look at 2021 as uh, uh, the next step, but we still stay the course to keep everyone safe. Yes, uh, early March, we heard the news that things were shutting down. I was considered and am considered an essential employee of Grand Valley State University. So I knew that uh, I still needed to present a service and still was able to come in and do my show. Yet that meant all interviews ease needed to be on the phone, which we could do. It loses a lot of the 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 connection that we have but i had a, sh a show to do and probably 80 percent of those first interviews were somewhat covid related now not all doom and gloom okay uh, how do you cook healthily uh, uh during covid how do you uh, uh keep your pets happy during covid how do you uh, keep the kids entertained so i had no problems finding interviews for the basic morning show on the television side we went all Zoom. I grouped um, mostly all interviews into three interviewees with themes. Uh, we began with businesses. How, and I also did a feature with the radio as well. How are you reacting? How are you coping? How can the community serve? What's your silver lining? So we adapted and basically continue this course uh, right up until now. So you still are Zooming, right? You're basically Zooming your, your yes. show? Yes. On the television side, everything is still zooming. On the radio side, everything is, um, I call it phone, uh, because I, I don't have the, the, the Zoom interaction on the visual side, but everybody is on the phone. I do a lot of tapings, and uh, we still have a 9 to 11 uh, show, and uh, I think we're still serving a purpose. All right. I'm going to wrap on in the with the, Stephanie Kolakowski. I forgot to say hi to her. You know, she's jumping in. Oh, Is that rude of her? Yeah, you know? it's, all good. <laughs> it's all good. Hi, dear. Hi, dear. You know, Hi, so I I'm want you to young. tip. I know you're excited to have Shelly here. I've interviewed her before, so I know a lot about her. So for our, our new listeners and people out there, um, I'm just going to put it to you. What have you been dying to ask her since you heard we were going to be interviewing her today? You know? Yes. <laughs> so we heard a little bit about uh, Shelly's past earlier, which we'll post uh, on our podcast page as well um, mm -hmm. later on. But Shelly, curious to know, you know, it, in times like these, so you're a veteran in the industry now. Um, people are not veterans who have had ex this experience in media or others, other, other sectors mm -hmm. and have now been learning and pivoting. What advice would you give for resilience and handling times like these? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know your passion. What is calling you? What What is keeping you up at night in a good way? I still want to follow my dreams of being uh, a journalist. So you call up your role model, your mentor, someone who you look, maybe that's the three of us, and you say, how can I help? Uh, how can I get involved? Um, how can I learn from this time? I want to be in this profession. So I'm, I throw it basically back on a responsibility of that person that wants to get involved. Um, now, perhaps I need to open a platform starting in 2021 to whether it's a, the high school uh, persona yes. or the college persona. So I'm gonna say, I have a place for you uh, at the table uh, in a learning kind of a way. So it still needs to be a reach out I'm responsible. 
I have a calling, I want to learn this, and it's not all going to come from a book, and I still need to have a platform available. So if, if the two of those meet, um, that's how I started 20 years ago. I love it. Okay, so I love whole- what you said about starting earlier with your platform too. You know, one thing working in radio, whenever we went into a high school or a middle school, the kids are just so excited and they have so many questions and they want to talk. They want to know how they can get into radio. You know, we would have tours all the time. Kids would come in and how wonderful it would be to actually not have to wait but have some type of people that band together and work through a program and an opportunity to connect and start learning those basic skills. Mm. Um, So by the time they get to the colleges and universities programs, one more people are probably going to sign up and want to do them. Um, And number two, they're armed, prepared and able to even expand farther. We were talking to Dr. Wayne when um, he was being interviewed a few weeks ago on Grand Tap Media. And he was sharing about how he's working with students too to set up platforms and websites and for nonprofits, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, But their starting point is, you know, their baseline. Um, So like Google Analytics and things that nowadays for businesses need to be there, Mm -hmm. they're not doing or teaching. And it all goes together, right? Like what we were talking about earlier with media and opportunities in that digital space. And so I love that. What I love that your willingness to create and work together to build that and to see how we can serve and what we can do to help there. So well, Shelly, you know, to really quickly on the, on the, on the net, uh, that was really good stuff. But to me, you know, you and I being huge networkers, being out there in the public, you know, that was part of our life. How's it going since March? I mean, when everything just kind of went, you know, how are you connecting? Well, How are you? Because that was a part of our, your life. Yes, it, it truly is. I have probably, well, I, I still maintain all my uh, boards. That, okay. that I, and of course, all boards are still uh, active and are, are Zooming. So there still is an agenda to, to, to meet with to meet with Hope Network, to meet with um, Meals on Wheels. Okay. I did host my first uh, gala in May. Uh, for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. That was somewhat interesting. Um, was it so virtual the, or was it in person? Yes, what was it? Virtual. No, the no in person. That that has shut down How, basically. How's that going? <laughs> oh well, it's it's the only, well, I've done, I did the leukemia. I did um, uh, C-SNP. There were two of us on the theater stage. Uh, no audience, but okay. it was uh, kind of a live, the two of us. Oh and all in hours okay. so it's, it's obviously all cut down and to almost nothing uh, as far as networking i mean i've got to be we have to be safe we can't not follow rules okay but it's very tough there have been unique happy hours um to at least stay in touch with friends and and other venues but <clears throat> but that has has shut down now i've turned personally my lack of of participation into um like behind the podium right. to being a participant um, because they haven't had a need for uh, an MC. Right. Or and a couple of obviously um, are using different techniques too, but it's, it's been tough. Um, well, and- I bet because you were bent. I mean, let's be honest, you know, you were, you know, you were up on the podium a lot, yes. uh, but, you know, for good, for, for people's missions to raise money and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then now you're in a, you're on a virtual where you're a line of you're a line of people. I hate to say that, but I do the same thing. I'm on the YMC board and I'm like, you know, whatever. You know, I don't mean to be like I don't care, but I'm not as engaged as when I couldn't wait to get there and get there and see my friends no. and, and push that. No. But that's just part of life. I mean, just to be virtual yes. is okay. It's a good substitute, but it's not the best in connecting and staying mm-hmm. with the mission. And there's just nothing like well, there's nothing like the podium for sure and taking yeah, really. <laughs> But there's, as you mentioned, um, there's nothing we can do. And we're all in the same boat. We all are rowing our boats differently. And um, we look forward to the, now, again, whether this platform helps, I put more work into my, I've done more interviews, put more work into my work, uh, more work into my personal working out. I probably swam the most I've ever have this summer. Uh, So you start to substitute 
this love for another love until we come full circle. And um, but we're all in the same in the same. So what are you talking about? Um, can you share with us? Because a lot of the people that were coming on your show were were promoting an event, promoting mm -hmm. a thing. So they're coming on and your regulars like YMCA, you know, that they come on regularly mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of you know what's going on in the county, what's going on with the commissioner? What are they talking about? You know, what are we well, talking talk about? Sure. Um, a lot of a lot of events are still happening virtually. Uh, Cherry Health still had their event. And I mentioned Michigan Women Forward still. We talk about their events. Um, a lot of uh, of national features will pitch their guest on how to wear a mask. Businesses locally have been manufacturing equipment. So there's been a little bit of a spin on who's been on right place. Burger Close still talks about how we're doing uh, with our economic uh, development. Theaters have all um, changed. Circle Theater, almost all virtually. Grand Rapids Civic Theater had a drive-in theater. Things yeah. still happen and those words still needed to, to get out. So even though we're all not gathering uh, for the Athena luncheon in September, there's still a, an Athena virtual celebration celebrating Tasha Blackman this year that was at four o'clock on Facebook. So there we go. Okay. So Same what thing about with the chambers and also I think to social impact marketing. So you're hearing a lot now and a lot more intentionality with corporations. And it's been really mm -hmm. cool to see the pivoting from image marketing to your interview formats to how can we engage, what can we control? How can we be yes. there and be present? Have you noticed that too? I have noticed that very much so. Um, DeVos Performance Hall celebrated their 40th anniversary. We did a, um, we actually did a documentary on that where we actually went and brought our cameras to the hall, socially distanced and talked to the ballet, the symphony, um, uh, Mike Lloyd from Broadway Grand Rapids. So, oh, yeah. and then I, I was able to do an audio feature an everyday feature. So we've twisted some of the words that need to get out with other ways. Okay, yeah. so you're downtown, and and I've been down there to your studio. You know, part of that your studio. What what's your share with us? What your you know, it's been through the summer, the riots. What's your what was mm. your feeling when all that started going down? And you're like, yes. you're doing your show, yeah. you're going down there, you're still do. You know what I mean? You're involved, mm -hmm. finding out what was it. Was, that, what was that like? For you? Well, it was it was painful to hear of of that. Obviously, um, our news. I'll give news. Obviously, uh, a pitch. They were able to. Uh, to bring back uh, current uh, news right on, you know, man on streets, et cetera. But the morning of the riot was a Sunday, wasn't it a Sunday? Saturday. I thought it was a Saturday. Because they um, did the, were yeah. you involved with the walk? Because the walk happened at no, night. No, it was like not. Saturday and then Sunday was cleanup. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That Sunday morning, um, I took my camera down there. I didn't want to take my microphone and stick it in people's faces and say, how are you feeling? But I, I took... But what happened was I made a note of the four or five people that I saw, a very diverse audience, and did a feature where I called them the next day, you know, how are you feeling? How have you reacted? How can the community help? I would always ask with how. They, so um, that's how I brought the personal side out versus this many businesses, and this is where the police are. Uh, I tried to... Um, present that more with news versus I tried to tell the stories. It was a good, it was a good feature. Well, you've been so, such a promotion uh, of promoting, you know, the police department, the military, cause we've yes. had on your show or whatever. Yes. What are your, yes. what are your thoughts when people are just coming out over the summer, just attacking personal friends of yours, people that serve and protect us? Mm -hmm. What was your reaction to them? Well, um, I'm a big believer that my personal reaction cannot be uh, presented in story form. In other words, I have to still be factual. I okay. still have to deliver my storytelling, but um, obviously, yes, I, I, I want my community protected. Uh, this community means a lot, a lot to me. Right, um, right. So we'll tell stories about, this is what's happened. Um, tell me your story. And again, I go back to how, how the community can help to repair. Uh, I avoid politics. I avoid, obviously, religion as much as possible okay. as far as uh, opinions. And uh, we just put one foot in front of the other. Obviously, I had the mayor on, um, but it was a conversation. Uh, uh, 
so, so that's kind of how I, I get out of a talk show host uh, opinion. So when you were interviewing the mayor real quickly, um, did you have to, you know, did you really ask her a lot? I didn't hear see the interview, but did you ask her some real tough questions or did you kind of well, like, well, we we support you still, even though our city is, uh, you know, is, is, is pretty much smashed after that beautiful yes. city that we had just February. We were down there all the time. And I wanted to yes. cry. I couldn't go down there for like two months was, because I loved it. I felt so bad for what yeah. was happening. Um, yes. So what's your thought well, on that? And, and well, back, I'll start, I'll start with the good thing for being down there that Sunday morning is um, I was not down there at 1.30 a.m. I was listening to, I was on my Facebook awake at night um, watching what was happening. Um, but that next morning, it was the cleanup. You would have felt pride in your city watching the cleanup at 7.30 a.m. That's the, um, you know, unfortunately, the damage was so severe that it was eight hours prior. But if you if you were able to see the, the cleanup, your heart would have known that we have a community. The uh, interview with the mayor was on the phone. So obviously, okay. uh, wasn't a lot of, of of face to face. It was basically um, the facts. What has happened? Uh, what? How will we uh, catch those involved? And again, how the community can help. I'm not a big, hard, tough question interviewer. Okay. Um, good, bad, the ugly. I mean, one can fault that, one cannot. I just want to. I want to know how you are. I want to hear your story versus how could you let this happen to our city? I can't go there. Right. And so, what I, do you, think you know, um, I'm going to jump in right here because I think okay. this is a really important topic. I really mm -hmm. do. And I think that when we look back, so many people, the emotions, the PTSD from those first responders on the scene to those watching at home, their city, you know, burning to saying, wow, how did we get here? We thought that we were doing all of this great work with diversity, mm -hmm. inclusion, and equity. We've been intentional about X, Y, and Z. We've opened lines of communications, but as media and, and people like to quickly blame the media, and I have a heart, obviously my whole career has been spent in it. And we teach and we have code of ethics that we have to follow. And you are not to give your opinion about polit political things, about religion. You are there to report the news mm -hmm. and you are there to understand both sides. And I think that in life, though, the people behind it that are, do that really well and in general who can ask questions, not to debate, but to understand first, to learn and they can connect. And so I love what you just said. And I think that that's exactly how I want, like, I want to live my life, not just in front or behind a camera, but just my life in general. Um, so kudos to you for doing that. And I do wonder moving forward and ever the opportunity to ask, um, and actually Commissioner Yassi called me yesterday, is how are we going to address that as a city, um, that mental health aspect? of wow like so many are suffering from depression but post-traumatic stress from that incident yes. how do we talk about that in a positive way we we talk to the players involved we talk to those from i understand uh we talk to the to those from um mental health foundation uh, of western michigan we spread that on all platforms we we hopefully see the billboards. We we share the suicide uh, line. Uh, it it becomes part of conversation because obviously asking for help is the first key. So anything we can do to be the messenger for that and to and to share those stories. I mean Doug Meyer uh, of the R Meyer family uh, shared his story with I understand and uh, so you you just. We have to we have to share that platform and again uh, hopefully someone is listening that oh you helped. feel like too people have stepped into their vulnerability more this year than ever before in yes. public roles and isn't that beautiful mm -hmm. um i think that when people understand that it's 
all of us are hurting. All of us are having feelings that our body, we maybe we haven't felt in a long time, that maybe things from the past that we never even dealt with that when we saw that triggered things. And just like grace, right? Like walking and living in grace, like not getting upset at the person who cuts you off because you have no idea what mm-hmm. kind of day that they're having, mm-hmm. you know? And at the, at the yes. end of the day, now that you witness this, is that such a big deal, right? Is that really such a big deal? Okay, Shelly, so now that we're in, uh, you know, we've been kind of virtual and a lot of the, I guess, other successful people out there are kind of at home. They're not touring. They're not doing a book tour or whatever. Mm-hmm. Have you been, um, have you thought about, to me, I'm thinking this is the best opportunity to get in with these people and do a virtual interview. Have you tapped in on that? Like I heard you say that you did, did you say Cheney? Who did you do did yeah, you interview? Yeah, Lynn Cheney, um, Rick Steves. Uh, that was a tough interview because he's a PBS uh, travel guru. Right, uh, right. The book for the love of Europe. And so I just talked to him a couple of weeks ago talking about, he's not traveling. Um, I, I get a lot of uh, uh, like former chief medical uh, uh uh, journalist, oh, I mean, he's former probably the last 10 years he's been gone. Bob Arnott uh, talked about wearing uh, the best way to wear your mask. Okay. Um, so, I mean, this would now be the time to talk to to the stars. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. That was- <laughs> I do. Too. I think um, I said I, I, I've been reaching out to people on LinkedIn, but, you know, even to following whichever is going to be. And some of the people that are spend so busy. They wouldn't even mm. think about coming. They're out there touring, but now they're home. And it may, could be the opportunity like Tony Robbins and stuff. Hey, you want to come on my show? And they yes. may say yes. Some of them may yes. have a, well, I'll give you 10 minutes, you know, but I'm, yep. are you looking at it as too as an opportunity to tap into some of these people that maybe were too busy traveling to take, take Yes, on? as long as their message, yes, yes. Um, because we would, we would ask about their personal side. How are you doing with with not uh, being on Broadway? Uh, I'd love to get uh, get a hold of the uh, the Hamilton uh, Lynn Maxwell. Uh, okay. Uh, on his that's on on a bucket list. Um, uh, the gal from the to, uh, Today Show, Kathy Lee Gifford, just wrote a book. I'm in touch. Oh, with- I love her. I love Kathy cool? Lee Gifford. Oh and my she god. Book, You're never too late. Um, so we're in talks with Kathy Lee. So. Um, oh. It, it's interesting because I say I have six to eight interviews in an hour. So it's at this point, so much has been COVID um, dealing with it from a local angle. I just book a guest from Mary Freebed, uh, you know, as we move in. So <laughs> it's not like I'm sitting around saying, who am I going to get on the show? So this makes me, you've given me a challenge to reach out to, you know, to this angle. I mean, can you, I'd be curious to see who would say yes. You're like, oh my God, guess who's going to be on my show, right? Be kind of exciting. Yes. But we are talking about authors and stuff like that. Have you, I'm, I'm just going to ask you, did you ever written a book? Have you ever written a book? No, it's on the list. It's, it's in it's in my list book. But I need to. <laughs> I love that goal book. <laughs> well, well, my dear, we need some um, off, we need some people locally that can dedicate some book into the, the Grand Castle Library. So I've been doing that. I'm on my fourth one. So a fourth or fifth, no, fifth one already. So reach out to them and say, hey, you wouldn't want to dedicate a book. Pamela would love to do a little bit of a, that's a plug for the Grand Castle Library. I get, we're doing dedications there. I think it's I get a great about, opportunity. I get about five books. I get about five books a week. I know uh, you do. I know, I know. So Shelly, who has been your favorite guest of all time and why? Wow. Well, I mean, <laughs> Pam raises her hand. <laughs> I know. Pam, for those that can't see her on the podcast, yeah. she's raising her hand like it was me. <laughs> you know, I can, I can tell, I can give you a couple answers uh, on a couple different <laughs> angles, and I'll start with the personal angle uh, because I was so into um, my Brady bunches and my Partridge families um, and the Waltons. I actually had um, Peter Brady. Christopher Knight in studio oh, wow. uh, about five years ago. And I had um, Richard Thomas, who played John Boy, in studio. Oh, my goodness. Uh, how, how about how so, about William Shatner? <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> you know the William story? Oh, yeah. That, that was it. <laughs> yeah, what happened to William? Was, um, I, I didn't that, hear the story. 
Yeah, Shelly, how'd that go? <laughs> that was, um, well, let's just say um, Mr. Shatner has, uh, has a unique personality. Number one, I would never say no to an opportunity, but I was not a big Trek fan. So, or, or Trek, you know, I mean, I, I Star Trek, Star Trek yeah. <laughs> was not as big as Partridge family was in my life. Um, but I had the opportunity to be, serve as his host when he came to DeVos Performance Hall a couple years ago. So it's me and Mr. Shatner on the stage in front of, of just, I don't know, a thousand. I mean, that the was full. So what an opportunity. Uh-huh. But he basically had a unique way of, of dealing with me. So <laughs> oh, no. he, he, he kind of called me out that don't you ever watch Star Trek. And of course I did my homework, but I, you know, I, I, I learned how to do this or whatever. <laughs> It was just an interesting experience, but I'll leave it at that. He was very it's lovely. You could, tell, you could tell people for years, well, it, our generation would understand it. I don't know if Steph would, because but uh, her <laughs> husband, Ed, would understand it. But when you told me that story, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have been there. I wish I would have been there, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. Uh-huh. But anyway, what was so, the okay, question? So I had, yeah. Okay, so I had Peter and, and, and Peter Brady and John Boy Walton. And, and the only reason I, I go there is because they were such an influence in my younger life of wanting to be on TV and, and uh, that I said to them, do you realize how much you, you know, yes, I was a fan. Um, and I did have to get the, I did have to obviously not let them know that I was picker paid him um, <laughs> on the professional side. Uh, obviously if you're an NPR listener, you most likely uh, had listened to Diane Rehm, uh who uh, followed uh her show was on after mine and she was in Grand Rapids. Uh, actually WGVU did a, we did a fundraiser with her. So I was able to be involved with that, but she was on my show. And for me to interview Diane Ream live, uh, that, you know, because A, you want to do a good job knowing that she's there, but B, this is, this is a lady that, that, you know, succumbed to millions uh, with her, her, her soul. So, and obviously wow. she's what would be your dream who would you love to interview wow um besides pamela and stephanie <laughs> <laughs> well, of course thinking, i've been thinking about that because i have so many interests do i want an athlete do i want you know a former olympian but i've had a couple of formal gal olympians uh uh mostly by phone and a lot of times the the stars are are um there is a product involved and I have to be careful with that. Mostly it's their book. Okay. But um, if they're selling something, I have to, I have to stay back. Ask the last question that we got to go. We're wrapping this up. So. All right. You, yeah, so definitely. Shelley looking ahead. Yeah. So understanding that we don't know what's going to happen or not happen. What is mm-hmm. one thing that you're very excited about with WGVU for next mm-hmm. year? Nice. I'm going to use that word of persevere as my 2021 word. Um, I, I want to maintain the success that we have uh, and build on that, I guess is, is safe to say. How do we perhaps build a platform, as we've been mentioning, for, for our future? Maybe there is a whole segment that uh, I bring up. Uh, safely in a couple of kids to do a show for 10 minutes for 15 minutes wouldn't that be kind of cool? that would be amazing i think that would wouldn't be, that be amazing wouldn't yeah. that be a challenge so so reach out um and and provide a different of a platform maybe bring the facebook lot bring a couple more opportunities to to use our platforms together uh and uh and join another board of directors yeah. yeah. All right. All right. We want to wrap this up. We want to thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, for all our viewers out there, or, or podcast people, you'll probably you will see Shelly once everything's opens up. You're going to see her on the podium at your next event, or you may she may be running next to you on your next 5K, or she might be with her dog in the park. But whatever it's going to be, or you're going to hear her on the radio. We want to wish her all the success in 2021. And um, Steph, do you have anything to say to her before we say goodbye? Because I know she's going to. You're a blessing. Um, <laughs> you are amazing. You're a legacy. And how can people tap in to Shelly Irwin who want to get in contact with you? You bet. Let's go right to irwinsh at gvsu.edu. Okay. 
or wgvu.org. Just the general website. Lots more than that, but I always, you know, one or two, that's it. Baby. You'll find her on well, Facebook. Thank you so you much, Shelly. Open her up, right? right? You need a board of directors. She's she's fabulous. She's gonna be she or in the next you. MC if we ever when we open up would be a yes. fabulous MC for your event, right, Shelly? <laughs> uh, it, it would be perfect. But I'm gonna get you on the airwaves uh, beginning uh, January. So get ready, practice <laughs> ups. I'll practice my ums and so's. You know I'm a Toastmaster girl. All right, we're gonna wish everybody a fabulous success in 2021. We will see you in January. This is Pamela Kine for Grant Tap Media. Say goodbye, Steph. Bye, Stephanie Kolakowski from Girl Business Today and Shelly Irwin. <laughs> All right, have a fabulous New Year's. Take care, everyone.